Section 2.7 is talking about lists of a bunch of real numbers. Suppose you have a real set of numbers. Well, all we talk about are real numbers around here in this class. And the set is, of course, not empty. And it has an upper bound. Then we can show that it has a least upper bound. Now, this theorem is actually equivalent to the axiom of continuity. And this is what we're going to use it to prove, the axiom con <coughs> of continuity to show that this how this theorem works out. It, it essentially says the new real number line doesn't have any holes in it. You see, all these upper bounds exist. So anyway, and the concept of this, we can see it very easily in a picture of the real number line. So you have a bunch of stuff here. That's your set S. And the elements in there are called S, little s. And there's a bunch of numbers. And you are able to draw some kind of upper bound for it. And let's call it, say, B. Um, Upper bounds that you traditionally we use capital letters for, it. and but it's actually just a number. So the there is a big number up there that's bigger than all the stuff that's uh, inside inside your set. Now how do we show there is a least upper bound? The way we're gonna go about it is using the axiom of continuity, which means we have to define the L and the R. So we have two sets we have to define and that satisfy the conditions of the axiom of continuity. <coughs> L, we will call L to be the set of L or X such that uh, X, oops, such that X is, where am I erase? Such that X is less than, uh, the set of all X such that X is less than S, the elements in there, for well, some S, okay, it doesn't have to be less than all of them. And then R, it then uh, is the other way, is R is the set of Y such that Y is bigger than S for all <coughs> S, for all S inside the set. So then, now the definition of these two sets are mutually exclusive and in includes all real numbers, which is a requirement of the axiom of continuity. Well, a number is either less than some S or bigger than all S if there is no other choice. And then we have to first make sure that these two sets are not empty. That's one of the conditions. How do we know <coughs> it's not empty? Well, because since S, the set S itself is not empty, there exists <coughs> an S that's inside the set. Uh, so then so then that shows that S minus 1, just pick the numbers a little bit smaller, it, but it will be inside R. Because that by the definition, it includes L inside L, pardon me. By definition, L is the, any number that's, uh, <coughs> that's less than some kind of S. And then similarly, we will look at R and say, well, is R empty? No, because the set S has an upper bound, that B thing. Now, B is bigger than, B is, the number B is inside the set L because, why? Because, because B is the upper bound, by definition, because B is bigger than S for all. So, so then that shows that L and R are not. So this proves that L is not empty and R is not empty. They both have stuff inside it. And the third condition of the axiom of continuity is that you have to prove that, uh, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. So you have the third condition is that you have to show that every element in L has to be less than every element of Y. So if you pick an at x that's in L, okay, so let's say x is in L, and then pick a y that's inside R, then x is going to be less than s for some s, s by the de de definition here, which is uh, going to be less than or equal to y, because y is bigger than every s out there, okay, if it's in R. So then, which means that satisfy the condition that x is less than y. That's for any kind of x that's in L and y is in R. And therefore, the th third condition of axiom continuity is met. And by the axiom, then, there exists the cut number. There exists cut number, cut, cut number C. And this cut number will be an upper bound but more importantly, it will be the least upper bound, which is what we're looking for. <coughs> now, first, we will show that it is an upper bound. Now, to, to, 
Now, let's say uh, to show that it's an upper bound, suppose, how do we know it's an upper bound? It's, let's say it isn't, okay? It's a proof by contradiction. Suppose C is less than S, so that it's not an upper bound. If it's bigger than all the S, then it is an upper bound. So let's say C is less than S for some S. All right, if that was true, then there exists a number A such that uh, A is between C and S. Okay, the real number system, you can always stretch it and find something out in the middle. So uh, there exists an A. And what, is, what does this A do? Well, A has two qualities. Now, A is, because A is bigger than C, right here, then A belongs to the right side of, because that's a difference. That's the definition of the number cut, the cut number. Okay, any number that's bigger than the cut has to be on the right side. But A is also less than S. If A is less than S, then A belongs to the left side because, because the left, that's the left side's definition. It contains all the numbers that's less than S for some S. Now, um, but that is the contradiction, which I will draw it like that, because, because the left side and the right side do not have common members in that sense by by its definition. <clears throat> so then that's a contradiction. And that proves that C is this proves that therefore um therefore C is an upper bound. So now next question, but that still hasn't proved that C is the least upper bound. The, to show the C is a uh, least upper bound, then uh, you do something like, let's say a certain number, <clears throat> let's say a certain number B, okay? So let's say B is less than C. Now can B be upper bound? By definition of the cut, any number less than the cut, that means that uh, B has to be on the left side. <clears throat> any number less than the cut has to be on the left side on the, in set L. If B is in set L, then B is less than s for some s because that's the definition of set l so b is less than s for some s and therefore then b is not b is not the upper bound and that that means that proves that uh, so this shows that c is therefore is the least upper bound and that concludes the proof.